We are awakening together. This is our weekly gathering we hold online. For more information, visit our website, awakening-together.org. We'd love to see you there. Okay. Thank you, Don. Hello, everyone. So happy to be here today with joy in our heart. Uh, so welcome to Awakening Together as we share uh, this process of joining one another and going forward to think about what's it all about. And so uh, I'd like each one of us to greet each other today, and uh, you might say a happy birthday to Jacqueline, who has a birthday this week, as well as anyone else that has a birthday. Uh, happy birthday to all. So, okay. Well, this is Awakening Together. Let me share our purpose we are an assembly of equals joined in common purpose, awakening to the one true self within an appearance of many faiths, many cultures, and many symbols, and we seek to discern one truth and to rest in its embrace. And the core value I selected for this homily is core value number three, we accept one true self which is one presence or being, non-dual, without beginning or end, and absolutely changeless. And we live this value by listening to each other, respecting each other, and allowing each one to be who he or she is. Well, let's open with a prayer here. And... I selected the prayer at the end of Lesson 189 in A Course in Miracles. Father, we do not know your way, but we have called and you have answered us. We will not interfere. Salvation's ways are not our own, for they belong to you, and it is unto you we look for them. Our hands are open to receive your gifts. We have no thoughts we have apart from you and cherish no beliefs of what we are or who created us. Yours is the way that we would find and follow. And we ask, but that your will, which is our own as well, be done in us, in us and in the world, that it become a part of heaven now. Amen. And so, uh, you know, and I want to share from inner wisdom this morning. Uh, yeah, I was a little nervous this week about this homily. It's been a while. And so I ask inner wisdom for a message, and this is what I got. Good morning, dear one. Don't worry. Be happy. You can't screw this up. Because I am with you. Just trust that I will flow through your voice, your mind, your heart, and through everyone else. This message is not yours, it's mine, and all is well. Wow, that brings up a lot of emotion in me. So we have a reading today. Uh, our reader is uh, Susan Bacon, and we have selections from uh, Robert Adams and Gina Lake. So Susan, I'll release the mic to you. Thank you, George. Can you hear me okay? Okay, wonderful. Thank you for the beautiful song and the prayer and the 
the reflection, George. The first reading that George has asked me to um, offer you is from Robert Adams, A New Reality. And it's a passage from the chapter on ever abiding grace. It's about peace as it relates to presence. Peace is your reality, your true nature. When you are awakened to who you really are, you have no quarrel with anyone, for you wish everyone well. You are a conduit of peace. It begins to filter into your life. Everything becomes more peaceful. You're not creating problems. This peace already exists within you. The more you awaken, the more you emanate this peace in your words, your actions, your very nature. You are peace. Always return to a peace that passeth understanding. The peace within never changes. Reach out your hand to whoever you can help. Bring sunshine into the lives of others. This is holy. This hastens your awakening. Your actions reflect your religion. Know who you are. You are love, purity, beauty, omniscient awareness. This is who you really are. No matter what happens to you, never forget your true nature. The world will pull you in many directions. It is both a mirage and a mirror. Like the mirror room in the amusement park, many reflections may seem real, but they are not. You can walk right into them and see that they are not as they seem. Then there are the images. They look so inviting, but they are not solid. You are so thirsty. You keep chasing them for a drink, but there is no drink, for that is not where you quench your thirst. It is all within. It is the false you, ch it is the false you that chases these things, the you that identifies with the material world. The world, nothing. A more complex way of distracting yourself it seems to make sense at the time, but it takes you further and further away until you completely forget who you really are. It is like you are in a trance. It will always provide you with another path and until you believe that it is all real, but it does not lead to happiness. This is the reason why you have to work on yourself every day you have to do some sort of sadhana. Otherwise you start re reacting to the world. The world becomes real to you. People are just other human beings to you. You forget that there are no others and that you are the one and that one is pure intelligence, divine harmony. Satchit Anama, Ananda. Para Brahman. You forget that you are that one, not as a body, but as an all pervading omniscience. The spiritual paths of true, the spiritual giants of true spiritual paths, the Alpha and the Omega. You are aware of each person's true heart, their pain. Their every word and action from the awareness of the ultimate truth. The supreme, all pervading, omniscient God awareness. This is not a mind game of sensory so called expansion. This is the dissolving of all human selfishness, ill will, aggression, cold heartedness resentment. Everything is understood. Everything is revealed. 
all is love. You do not wish to leave people. You love them even more. Their pain is your pain. You do not unfold in spite of others. You unfold into the heart of God. All others are in the heart of God. On a practical level, as you unfold, really unfold, you are driven to help heal. Heal what? All pain, all differences, all the people you have hurt. Then you realize who is healed and who heals. It is the compassion and mercy of God. This is more important than anything else. This is the peace that transcends all circumstances, the all-pervading peace that we feel here. But that is only inkling, a beginning, a hint. Everything turns into this peace. You realize joy is your birthright. You have compassion for any pain. You instantly ask what you can do to help. This is why it behooves you to ponder. Quote, if the end result of illumination is love, compassion, and humility, what if we were to do and be this now? End quote. All of the time through all of this, your true self remains unchanged, awaiting your realization only by love. This is reality based, a new reality for those who wish to partake of this wonderful community of enlightened beings of which we are a part of. The second shorter passage is from Gina Lake. Uh, from her book, From Stress to Stillness, Tools for Inner Peace. And the chapter is called Present Moment Awareness. The experience of the present moment is an experience of presence. It is called presence simply because it's what we experience when we are fully present. Although presence is too mysterious, rich, and profound to be captured by words, we have many words for it, including stillness, silence, ultimate reality, the now, essence, the sacred, the wholeness, the mystery, the divine, the peace that passeth, passeth all understanding. Hang on a second. The peace that passeth all understanding. Unity, oneness, love, truth, and awareness. These are all attempts to describe the ineffable experience of being in touch with who we really are. We use words such as stillness, silence, peace, and love to describe presence, not only because we become still, silent, peaceful, and loving when we're in presence, but also because when we become still, silent, peaceful, or loving, we drop into presence. Thus, many of the words that describe presence are both a description and a prescription for experiencing it. Presence is a sense of connectedness with everything, a sense of unity and belongingness, a feeling of being home, being held in a mysterious, unimaginable and benevolent universe, at one with life and with the divine that is behind all life. When you are in presence, your boundaries soften and expand to include everything you're experiencing. Your sense of me is replaced by a spacious beingness that feels complete, holy, 
content and fully alive. Presence is a state of complete contentment and happiness. You feel like there is no other place you'd rather be than where you are and nothing you'd rather be doing than what you're doing. Presence is the fulfillment we are all searching for. Each of us carries the experience of presence within us because it is us. Life gives every one of us brief experiences of it, even daily. Throughout our day, we are present. But for how long? This is key. Are you present to life just enough to not have an accident, for instance, while continuing your mental monologue? How long you, do you dip into your present moment experience before you're back in your thoughts? There are times when we dive into our present moment experience, and those are happy times. The more time you spend engaged with your present moment experience, the happier you'll be. If you're able to stay longer, that experience will deepen. Once you do, the truth can no longer be hidden from you. Whatever we focus our attention on becomes magnified. Thank you, Susan. Great reading. And uh, something that we can all contemplate. So I want to go back to, as we begin here, to Lesson 189 and share with you, uh, as we start here, Simply do this, be still, and lay aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is, all concepts you have learned about the world, all images you hold about yourself. Empty your mind of everything it thinks is either true or false, good or bad, of every thought it judges worthy and all the ideas of which it is ashamed. Hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought the past has taught, nor one belief you have ever learned before from anything. Forget this world, forget this course, and come with holy empty hands unto your God. And so we come with holy, empty hands as we as we focus on joining in that perfection of all that is. So I want to start here with a, a quote from Albert Einstein, you know, uh, Einstein amazes me. You know, he was a mathematical genius, but uh, he also had a very clear uh, concept of God. And so Albert Einstein says, a human being is part of the whole called by us, universe, a part of limited in time and space. One experiences oneself as something being separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of one's consciousness. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. I love that term. And the reason I shared this was this phrase, it's a kind of optical delusion. And so as we see ourselves as individuals, uh, it's really just a delusion. And... Uh, 
So as we begin and rest and pause and say yes, and rest in the awareness of now, of the presence, so that we can feel the presence, say to yourself, I am good enough to be loved. Give you a couple of quotes from the Old Testament here. Uh, well, actually one from the Old Testament and one from the New from Deuteronomy in the Old Testament. But if there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him. And if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. And the thing that struck me about this quote was the there. If you, if from there you seek the Lord your God. And so where is there? There is in the heart. It's not in the mind. We, you know, we have absolutely no ability to understand God with our mind. And then from Matthew 7, 7, in the New Testament, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. And so we're knocking on God's door today. And we're seeking. We're asking for that clarity and that wisdom. Now, last Sunday, Jacqueline talked about the oneness that she shared. Uh, the realization that doesn't come from the mind. It comes by dropping into the heart. To move from desire to desirelessness. To trust yourself that inner wisdom can and will guide you. To surrender your ideas about the truth. Learn to be still and take the pause and listen and allow guidance to come forth and realize there is only one. And so I want to build on that. And by the way, uh, if you missed that homily, uh, it's well worthwhile going back and listening to it again. And so today I want to focus on the question, what's it all about? I don't have a clue. George does not know. And so I teach what I would learn. And, you know, it doesn't come through my mind. So the other way to look at it is what's it not all about? Now, Robert Adams shares, I feel and realize that everything is a projection of the mind. And Rupert Spira says, it's not enough to discover what you're not. And so let's look at the reading from Adams again. And so he shares in this excerpt from A New Reality, peace is your reality, your true nature. You are when you are awakened to who you really are, you have no quarrel with anyone, for you wish everyone well. Uh, you know, is that our experience in the world today? Do we truly have no quarrel with anyone? You know, we're, <laughs> we're two days away from a, uh, a major event in the United States, the election of our next president. Uh, and it's very easy to see that the emotion of fear is alive and well and present. This whole process is driven by fear. So, 
how can we look at this process and become a conduit of peace? And Robert says it begins to filter into your life if we can identify with that essence of peace. It filters into your life and everything becomes more peaceful. So how do you feel more peaceful? How do you be part of the solution and not the problem? This peace already exists within you. The more you awaken and the more you emanate this peace in your words, your actions and your very nature, you are peace. You know, most of us are not going to have a spontaneous awakening and the other path is the path to devotion. So let's focus on becoming that path and looking. How can we be part of the solution? And we can do that by always returning to the peace that passes all understanding. That peace within that never changes. How can we bring sunshine into the life of others? Not just the ones we like. <laughs> How can we bring peace into the lives of everyone? And so, we can do that by focusing on being present. As we focus on being present, we have that experience of presence. And we let that presence flow through us out into the world. You know, this world pulls us in all kinds of directions. The ego is, uh, is perfect, absolutely perfect, uh, and distracting us. You know, the ego is, uh, is just a master of controlling our lives. And we get all entangled with this, this process. Uh, you know, here recently we, uh, we learned that we're really programmed. Mostly by the time we're age seven, we're programmed with all the beliefs that we're going to run our life with. Those beliefs are a matter of, you know, our family, those around us, our culture, our community, and the basis of these beliefs is negative. 75% of our programming is negative, and about 95% of our day is spent just running these programs. And so, how do we stay in that 5%? And so, it is the false that chases all of these things. We identify with the material world this world, this world of nothing. Uh, and it's such a complex way of distracting ourselves. You know, I mean, I've been retired for many years, but I've really become aware, aware of how I distract myself with busyness. It's very easy to stay busy. 
uh, each of us has our own way to do that. When you're working, you know, your, your busyness is somewhat defined uh, for the majority of the day. But uh, regardless of your circumstances, look at your busyness. How important is your day-to-day -day activities that you focus on in this busyness? And so if you spend 95% of your day in distractions, it doesn't really leave a lot of time to really focus on who you truly are. So, so let's continue here. Uh, Robert says it's like you're in a trance. And I can identify with that. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I had a dream last night. And in that dream, I was taken back to uh, this time when I was uh, in my early 20s. I was married. And I've said this before, but I was just crazier than all get out. And my wife was the equal and opposite crazy. And uh, <laughs> I was thinking about our first apartment. It was a brand new apartment. It was a fourplex. And uh, we were the first ones in it. Uh, and when we left that apartment a year later, the landlord was not very happy with us. Uh, I, first of all, he had put a cheap carpet in there. I don't blame ourselves for that, but <laughs> we had a child, so we had a, uh, uh, a babysitter come in. And so there was someone in that place 24 hours a day, and it was a small apartment and the path, the walking path was pretty narrow. So that carpet just wore out in a year. That wasn't our fault, but there were some other things. Uh, my first wife liked to throw things. <laughs> and so you can imagine there was a little dings and damage here and there. And he was extremely unhappy with us. I went to pick up our deposit after we had moved out. And he said, I'm not going to give you your deposit. And he took me around and showed me all of these things that uh, were going to have to be repaired before he could rent it again. And I'm thinking, wow. That was, and I don't know why that, that like I say, that dream came up. But uh, it just really, it was like I was focusing in that dream on not enough. And that was a consistent theme throughout my life. George is not enough. Um uh, and I certainly recognize that uh, the craziness that has occurred in my life. Uh, so, and I'm sure that, uh, that most of us have a story, maybe not quite as, uh, as dramatic as uh, the story of my life, but most of us have these, these things in our life that have really just told us over and over again, not enough. You're not enough. You know, Henry David Thoreau has shared in his book on Walden's Pond that men and women live lives of quiet desperation. And what is this desperation all about? You know, the ego is really not our friend, this thought of separation. It's not our friend. So, so how do we dissolve all of this human selfishness, ill will, aggression, cold heartedness, resentment? How do we get to that point where we can truly understand what love is? You know, love is not my favorite word. It, it means nothing. It means everything. Uh, you know, Helen Hamilton uh, has replaced 
God with the word nomenon. Because if you say God to someone, it can mean anything and everything. We all have a different concept of God. So she chose this world nomenon uh, to really remove uh, these misconceptions. And so we need something to replace the word love because, as I said, it means everything and it means nothing. So I don't know what a good word would be, but maybe as we explore this, uh, yeah, and Don shares in the two evaluations in ACIM, it says the ego does not love you. You know, we're a pawn in this thought of separation. Now, there's got to be something there because uh, we chose to have this experience. Why we chose this, not a clue. I do not know. <laughs> uh, but we chose it. So Robert points out, if the end result of illumination is love, compassion, and humility, what if we were to do and be this now? Okay. All of the time, all of this, your true self remains unchanged. So, you know, this experience of life in this thought of separation is all about change. I, I look at my life, it's like, wow, it's constant change. And, uh, you know, am I the same person I was when I was 20 years old? I sure hope not. Uh, was I the same? Am I the same person now that I was when I was five years old? No. You know, that's a memory, kind of a fuzzy memory because I don't have a great memory. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just, uh, I really as I think about what's it all about the answer is not in this world it's not in this world so so let's go to Chino Lake and I think the key and Gina Lake has it here the key is being present. This is really what it's all about. Do you want to awaken? Then be present. As you, as you uh, have these moments of awareness throughout the day, and we all have them, you know, I think the difference, the difference is how much of our day that we spend in presence. You know, when you're, uh, when you're training to do anything that you want, if you only do it five minutes a day, you're never going to get there. You know, you look at our, our professionals in any realm, professional athletes, uh, musicians, et cetera, et cetera. They don't just pick up their instrument or, train their body a few minutes every day. It's important to them. They focus on it. They spend hours and hours and hours and years. You know, it's, you know, you hear this, especially with uh, popular uh, groups that uh, you've heard the term, uh, they're an instant success. No, <laughs> that doesn't happen. These people, First of all, they have talent, but they have trained and trained and trained and trained. And then, you know, there's a moment they get a break and they, uh, they're they sprung upon the world and, and people uh, enjoy what their talent is. But they didn't do it by focusing 5% of their day 
on their 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 uh, skill. So the key is being present. And Regina shares from the Peaceful Warrior. Are you paying attention? So that's what we have to do is pay attention. And we pay attention just by allowing this awareness to constantly help us just look. It doesn't matter what the mind is saying. You know, there's, uh, there's thoughts always coming through our mind. Uh, it doesn't matter what's going on in the realm of thought. Just look at it. And look at it without judgment. You know, it's so. Uh, you know, we're we're like uh, we're like in a, a holodeck. We're we're a character in a video game. You know, I, I mean, I enjoy playing these little stupid video games, and you know, you create uh, a lot of them are uh, have elements of uh, a battle in them. But uh, you create these little ponds and you move them around and, uh, and, and, you know, most of them end up dying. But you don't care because you're not that little pond. You're just moving that pond. And that's sort of the way that ego moves us around on this chessboard of life. It just moves us around. And... Uh, uh, you know, the ultimate result is just mindlessness, just a mindless distraction. So, so how do we focus on being present? So let's, let's look at Gina Lake here. Uh, she shares peace is a wonderful and refreshing experience. But if you're able to stay longer, this experience will deepen. It will strengthen and become more natural. Stay a little longer with the moments in which you are present. And we've talked about the ego. The ego hides in distractions and it's constantly pulling us out of presence. Whenever we stay focused on, whatever we stay focused on becomes magnified. And for the ego, that's anything involving separation. And of course, the ego primary programming is fear. Uh, fear. We experience that with hate, with judging, with focusing on the past, looking toward the future. Uh, and, well, you know. This word hate is another thing. Uh, you think, well, I don't really hate that much, but do you feel irritated? What irritates you? If you're standing in the uh, shopping line, ready to check out, and there's someone ahead of you that's got a whole basket full of stuff, and they have two or three different orders, uh, do you get irritated? Or you're driving and some other driver does something stupid. You know, they're on your road after all. Can't they see that it's your road and they're in your way? So what irritates you? The irritation is just a mild form of hate. It's that form of wanting something to be different than what it is. So fear, what are we afraid of? You know, ultimately, the ego's goal is to destroy us. It's to keep us in its web of lies and deceits, and it ultimately consumes us in death. We're like a, a fly in a spider web. And it just spins us in its little cocoon there until it gets ready to dispose of us. You know, Rupert Spira says the, the true goal of life and the true purpose of life is happiness. He defines God as happiness. 
So let's not make other people wrong. Number one, don't make people wrong. Just realize that our thoughts are not who we are. Okay. And I see, I see I've, I've rambled on here uh, and I'm just getting into Gina Lake. So we may not have time. But I loved what she shared in this finding peace and happiness in what is. The experience of the present moment is an experience of presence. It's called presence simply because it's what we experience when we're fully present. And as we, as we are drawn more and more to this presence, it becomes easier and easier to be present. You know, I have found myself really losing interest in a lot of things. I used to uh, focus on the news between television and radio probably four hours a day. I recorded some programs because I didn't want to miss them and that way you could I could uh, skim through the uh, commercials too. But uh, four hours a day, I would focus on what's going on in the world according to someone's opinion. You realize the news is someone's opinion. And it's almost always negative. You know, you don't, you don't, <laughs> if, it, if it bleeds, it leads. That's the motto of the news industry. They got to make, they got to find something uh, negative that we're drawn to because we're all drawn to the negative. So just focus on being present. I, I've lost interest. I mean, right now I do skim some internet uh, sites but I don't listen to them. I don't read the articles. I'm not interested in it anymore. I don't know why. It's just fallen away. Uh, I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff around my house this year. I've sold two motorcycles and a truck. And I've got another trailer I'm going to sell. And I've got other things. It's like I don't need these things in my life. So... What's that all about? I think in part it's about releasing the busyness of the world. You know, our, we don't own stuff, our stuff owns us. I can't tell you how many hours I spend uh, sorting and storing and moving and looking for something I know I've got. It, I don't own it. It owns me. And I just as soon let it go. So what can we let go? So. All right. I'm going to wrap it up here. It's a quarter after. So I'll just jump to this. What's it really all, all about? Being in the present with presence looking for that experience of true happiness, true joy, truly realizing and dropping into the heart. As Jacqueline said last week, the answers are not in the mind. We have to drop into the heart. The realizations of the oneness of all things in perfect harmony with absolute perfection. So, okay, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thanks so much. I've had a good time. I hope this was helpful.
Well, thanks everyone for being here today. Uh, I want to close with one little short statement here. And uh, of course, uh, uh, Don is posted on the board. Uh, you know, we do re uh, rely. <laughs> We do rely upon your donations for Awakening Together. And so uh, you can go to awakeningtogether.org. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, all right. It's time for folks to share. And uh, let, me, let me just leave you with one thought. Deep within your divine heart, there is found the very essence of your pure divine self. You are created of divine light and divine love. And you are not this physical body you have identified yourself to be. You are vast and brilliant beyond relief. And so I'm going to release the mic here. Uh, if anybody has anything they'd like to share, uh, it's your time. So, Okay, we don't see any hands here, so... We've got five minutes here, and uh, so I, you know what, I'm going to continue to share out of this divine identity, because uh, this is divinely inspired by a friend of mine, Temporal. So you are vast and brilliant beyond belief. You have no true idea of just how magnificent you truly are. You are completely unlimited in any way. Have you ever wondered why you agreed to live within such extreme limitations? Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be totally free, to just be and create anything that you desire? You have that inherent freedom. Just consider that you have agreed to live in limitation in a world dominated by fear because you have forgotten your true divine identity. Even if on some level you do realize your true self, why is there still the appearance of limitation or lack of any kind in your life? Knowing about something is not the same as knowing it with your whole being. How much do you actually, are you actually living from your divine self? Does that even matter to you? If so, where is it on your priority list? Self-realization and living as an embodied divine being is how you will transform first your own life and then the world. So, okay, we got two minutes. I'm going to end with that. Uh, and thanks so much for being here. Thank you for watching. This was our weekly gathering that we hold online. For more information, you can visit our website at awakening-together.org or you can subscribe to our Awakening Together channel and click the bell for more notifications when we post our weekly gatherings. Thank you again for watching.